Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of DIY Animatronics. Uh, sorry I've been kind of lax, like I haven't posted anything in like a year and a half, um, but I've been kind of busy. So, um, oh, no more intro. Couldn't be bothered. So, and you probably skipped through it anyway. Um, so, a while back, a friend of mine, Frank, contacted me, and he's like myself, he's a huge Stargate fan, and he said, called me up and said, hey, do you want to do animatronics for a Stargate helmet? And I said, well, I've already done one, but, you know, it was kind of a low budget uh, foam, you know, real inexpensive uh, job, which is a great Halloween costume. I'll put links to that project in the notes. Um, but he said, no, this is like the movie one. And I said, what do you mean? He said, this is made entirely from movie production pieces. It's like you walked onto the set in the early 90s and said, I will take this. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Um, so when he sent me the fiberglass castings, I was just, look at that. It's just so beautiful. Yeah, I was absolutely floored. So when I first, uh, my friend sent me this set of castings, you know, they're so beautiful. And the first thing that went through my mind was, don't muck this up, you know, really, do, do not screw up these castings. Um, so uh, I kind of improved um, my previous design and um, fixed the mistakes that I had earlier. I got the mechanism for the fans going right in this one. In the previous one I made, they went in opposite directions. Um, they didn't fan out in the proper way like this one. Um, and I kept the mechanism for the head uh, similar in that it has all the same movements, but now the servos that make the head move up and down and left and right are actually inside the helmet like they were in the movie. So with this helmet, um, I decided to kind of improve on my previous design and uh, make it a little bit stronger, maybe give it a bit better range of motion. Uh, the previous one did not have the operating, the working iris, uh, which the original movie helmet did have. Uh, the eyes faded uh, in and out on the movie helmet and then the eyes had that operating iris. This actually gets a, a red lens that covers it when I send it back to my friend to get painted and everything. Um, now on the original movie helmets, I believe, I don't know, I, I didn't have access to one. You know, they're kind of expensive and rare. So I think the mechanism that they had inside of this to enable the head to move up and down and left and right was kind of similar to uh, an animatronic eye mechanism where you have kind of like a, a gimbal where you have two rotating collars. You know, one moves inside, the other one moves up and right, and up and down and left and right. Um, but on those movie helmets they had in this piece right inside here, You'll see, if you ever see a picture of one, they have a flat, like, aluminum plate. And when I got the castings, they have this, you know, this piece right here. And on the original movie helmet, they slice this off, and they have a big aluminum plate that's stuck on there with a rod that comes out. And then the rod mounts inside the helm, inside the head. Um, but I wanted to keep this part. I thought, oh, that'd be kind of cool if I could put, you know, the two servos inside there and then make it pivot right, you know, almost right at this point. So that's what I did for this one. You know, in, with animatronics, the, the first thing you learn is that it doesn't matter how you get the desired effect as long as you get it. You know, how, how you get there is kind of irrelevant. Um, for this uh, fan mechanism, um, in order to make this move this way, I had a, uh, I kind of designed the linkage in a program called Force Effect. Uh, it's a free bit of software that's done by Autodesk and uh, you know works on an iPad, a Chromebook, you know all kinds of different uh, hardware, Android, I think you can use it on your iPhone even. Um, it allows you to design uh, linkages and then put them into motion so you can see kind of how everything works. So I just kind of played around with that until I got the you know exact movement that I, that I wanted and yeah, just kind of went from there. So just like the original um, movie helmet, this one is radio controlled. This one is meant uh, not to be worn, but as a display piece. So he, my friend wanted it pretty much exactly like the movie piece. Um, the previous one that I'd made, 
uh, was worn, it was a cosplay helmet, and that one had uh, an Arduino that controlled all the movements in there. So you could set one of these up, you know, any way you want. All right, so I'll uh, get this thing fired up, and we'll see how it moves. Okay, we got eyes. Looking down on this too. Eyes brighter. Iris. I can see you. So the head comes off, there's two screws underneath here with a mount right here. So you can see inside the helmet there's an aluminum plate right here and this is held in with some uh, propoxy and then uh, fiberglass cloth on top of that to reinforce it. And it's got two threaded screws that are held inside there. Those screws go through this side, this plate, and then down in here, focus in a little bit closer. There's a spring plate that pushes against the bottom inside of the helmet, and that's what helps hold the head in place as this moves. So we've got this servo in the front that allows the head to tilt to the right and to the left. This, there's a clamp here with a little bearing plate and uh, those are both Actobotics pieces. You, you can buy those right off the shelf. So here's the iris. The iris is just a part that's on, you can find on eBay. And then there's a little uh, locating plate for the pin that allows it to open and close as the outer pieces move. The outer piece is just a piece that I turned on a lathe and it's got a couple of set screws to hold the iris in place. And then there's the, the high-tech digital servo for each one of those. On the back side, on the back side of the head is where you find the swivel bearing and that allows the head to move up and down and left and right. Inside the helmet inside the helmet you see there's two servos with two machined aluminum arms that are also uh, Actobotic Servo City parts. A lot of that and then here you can see the uh, Actobotics piece that's used to mount the pivot for the fan. So these caps are held on with magnets and a little centering piece right here that attach to these two screws so these are adjustable so I can shift the position of the cap in and out. And then here you can see how the mechanism works. There's a separate arm for each one of the fans. The upper fan moves a little bit more than the second fan. The second man fan moves a little bit more than the bottom one exactly like in the film. Uh, these arms are just cut out with a bandsaw, so really simple, easy to make. Uh, same thing with this aluminum piece back here. Oh, and it's got these little brass fingers on here, exactly like the movie, because otherwise, you know, when this moves back, you would have an open gap there. So these two little brass pieces cover the openings as they move, just like in the film. Okay, so that's it. Uh, be sure to check out the uh, build diary on DIYAnimatronics.com. There's a link on the uh, about page there to the forum as well. So if you ever have any questions about your own projects or you need to get help um, or want to learn more about this kind of stuff, I have a forum set up to help people out. Uh, I try to answer all the questions as best as I can. Uh, and uh, there's also a build diary of this that shows uh, all the individual parts, how they were made and assembled and everything on tested 
as well as uh, Hackaday.io. Uh, uh, I have a project page there that even lists all the individual Actibotics part numbers as well as all the high-tech servo part numbers and all that stuff that you can get from Servo City. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.